go. Um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda tonight? Well, I'm not on the agenda, but I have a question. Okay, all right. All right, so um, did that. I um, I looked at the, the meetings minutes for the meeting just a week ago and they all looked fine to me, so I'd move to approve. I had one little tiny correction. Yep. Um, in the paragraph about West Hill, um, one of the bridges is pre-stressed, not re-stressed. Oh, re-stressed, pre. Thank you. Re. <laughs> Okay. Hey, dude, yep. on, that, on that agenda we have tonight, that next meeting date is wrong on that agenda. Next it meeting. Should, it oh, should be right. September 14th instead yep. of yep. August. Is that on the, um, is that on the minutes? No, that's on oh. the, uh, the agenda. Oh. On the agenda you sent. Yep. Yep. You're the, right. Just the next meeting at the bottom. No big deal. Yep. All right. So I'd move to approve the uh, the minutes with the uh, removal of one P, as Pat noticed. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Second that. Uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, got that. Yes. Um, Dorothy, what do we owe this honor to? <laughs> Um, I have a question about whether we could have a flower show on Friday, the 11th of September in conjunction with the farmer's market on that Friday. I've already spoken to Beth and she said it's fine, but I thought we would need to ask your permission if we use the uh, gazebo, the bandstand mm -hmm. or, and the surrounding uh, around the bandstand. And it would, we would follow all the safety restrictions they follow at the farmer's market. There would be nothing different. It would be masks and uh, we would have one way traffic and yeah, a, monitor. It, yeah we'd monitor it. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. basically it. We're not charging any money. It's just a, an activity to go it's along with the It sounds like an enhancement of the farmer's market there. Yeah. yeah, I thought so. Yeah. And this is a request from the Flower Committee of the Federated Church, who is always the sponsor of the Flower Show. Mm -hmm. I see no problem with that. That sounds sounds um, fine to me. Do you guys have any input on that? No. Nope. No. Sounds good to me. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. We monitor it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We will. We will do that. All right. Thank you straight. very much. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. I'll yeah. sign off. All right. Have a nice day. Yep. Um, hey, next... before you sign off, Dorothy. Yeah. I, I see on the agenda there, doing that, the approval for the park use for the White River Valley players. Yeah. Yep. So, We've got that application on on our, on our desk here, and this um. And that is, yeah, I, I'm, we're going to approve that. I, or at least I, I would move to approve that. I have seen no problems with that. Yeah. And that was for putting, putting the, the people, the figures up on the park. Right. Right. Yeah. I didn't hear I, that, Pat. I second it. Oh, you second oh. that. All right. And what, what dates do you have written down on that approval sheet? I have... Right. The, the harvest fair nine seven well, nine seven to nine. Oh, I think they went team. Yeah, I think to the fourteenth. The okay. Old. Yeah. That's fine. They did it That's, for a so whole week, I believe. They'll be up. Yeah. They'll be up for a week. Yeah. Okay. Because there is no harvest fair, but we just wanted to have those yeah. figures. Yeah. An echo of the harvest fair. Yeah. An echo or a precursor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. No, no, we appreciate your efforts to make life um, more beautiful in town. Well, we'll do our best. Yeah. Okay. Thank right. you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um, Bruce, I see you're on the agenda as a guest tonight. Um, okay. A couple of years ago, Mark Harvey came to 
the historical society to one of our meetings with the idea of having a new veterans monument uh, place somewhere in town. And this would be to honor the veterans um, post World War II. So from Korea on up to the current time. Yeah. Um, so he asked the Historical Society to take the lead on this. And it, as you can tell now, it's taken a while. Yeah. But I did go to um, the VFW and the American Legion, uh, brought that up to them. They thought it was a good idea. Didn't really come up with any concrete suggestions of what it might look like or where it should be. But the one thing they did say was, don't try to put specific names on the monument. You're always going to leave somebody out or misspell somebody's name. So it should be more generic of honoring those folks. So we kicked the ideas around and finally uh, decided that the best location would be down at Woodlawn, someplace down in, in that cemetery. So in the last month, I've met twice with the cemetery commission, once at one of their meetings at the town clerk's office. And last week, we actually went down to the cemetery and looked at um, at least three potential sites. And right now, we're thinking the best location would be on the left-hand side of the entrance road as you're going up the hill directly across from the memorial bench that's already there, but not try to configure the slopes to make it on the same level. It would That would require a lot of uh, cuts and fills uh, to bring it down to that level. So we were thinking of just creating a a uh, small flat area um, and some fill would be required on the very left hand side of that and that would be held in place with a low um, native stone wall like you see around different areas of the cemetery. Um, so that's the preferred location. We do not have any kind of a final design um, but the way I've been leaning is toward um, just a rectangular slab, um, verde antique on a substantial base. Um, the insignias of, of the armed forces would be uh, displayed there. And then we would probably name the different conflicts and possibly put the dates down if we can accurately, you know, find out what those specific dates are. Uh, the wording, like I said, would be something generic to say that something similar to uh, in honor of uh, the women, men and women from Rochester who have served their country in times of conflict or, you know, something like that. Um, so that's where we're at right now, and we wanted to get your folks' thoughts and permission to put it there in Woodlawn. It sounds um, sounds appropriate to me. I think that's a that's a good good location. That was one of the questions that came up before: is where where would it go? You know, um, and who is there? Um, who would be funding the uh, purchase of the stone? Uh, there's a donor who has put money into an account so far. Yeah. We're open to get uh, some more donations or maybe even the whole slab donated. I wouldn't be surprised if you could do that. No. I think, I think there was a considerable donation up when Hancock put up their, mon their three monuments there. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds, I, I, I encourage you to move forward and go ahead. Do you guys have any see any issues with that? Oh, I think it's a good fit. Something 
that we could do there pretty easy. I think that's the appropriate location. There's there's plenty of room to pull off the, the entrance road there and park. Uh, it isn't a steep climb from where the lower road intersects the main road there. So, you know, most people could get out pretty easily mm -hmm. and, and go visit um, the monument right there. Both of them, actually. Right. Yeah, they'd be close Correct. to each other, which would yeah, be I like. I like that idea of that about them being bracketing the road like that. I think that that's appropriate. They will be aligned. Yeah. One directly across the road from the other, but not on the same elevation. Yeah, I understand. The yeah. Problems I mentioned. Yeah. So no. we would worry about um, uh, floodplain in that area. I think where where we're talking about. Um, without doing any excavation, we're well out of the floodplain. And it'd be well anchored. It's not really a big structure that, uh, you know, the footprint is actually going to be pretty small. Okay. No, it sounds great, Bruce. Thanks for your energy on that. Well, we got a ways to go. It's not going to happen this fall, but hopefully some of the prep work will get all done. And yeah, um, I'll certainly come to the select board with a final design so you can take a look at it before it gets carved. Great. Once right. it's carved, it's hard to change. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to spell anything wrong. No, <laughs> not at all. Especially someone's name. All right. Well, thank you, Bruce. You're more than welcome. Yeah. Um, that's it for the guests. Um, Joan, you made it in tonight. What you got for us? I don't really have anything new since last week. I know, it was pretty close uh, turnaround from last yeah. week. Yeah. Still working on the same stuff I reported on last time. Yep. All right. Joan, I had a question. Yeah. What were the, go over again, the two types of uh, bridges for West Hill? Oh, okay. Let me uh, turn on the video so you're. I can. I, one one was a precast uh, concrete bridge, so right. It, it was concrete. And it was all going to be cast off site and then brought in and set with a crane. Right. And then the other option was a steel bridge with poured concrete in place, kind of you know an old fashioned the bridge. Footing. Yeah, the footings with steel girders. Right. Yeah. With concrete abutments? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Just seems like it's a awful uh, lot of money for a short span, but uh, uh, I know <laughs> everything. I know how we've got a footbridge across the road from there that cost $150,000 too. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of shocked at the cost estimate. Um, <laughs> but it's a tough angle. You know, significantly wider because it has to handle those big logging trucks. Um, Correct. And, As Brian said, a lot of that cost is in uh, pre-construction expenses, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think it was that much. Um, he asked them to take it out because they had included, you know, all their design services and that kind of, thing. and. Uh, the Forest Service will be providing most of the construction phase uh, over engineering oversight as opposed to VHB. So um, yeah. they forgot about that. Um, so we have some new numbers, which I'm sorry, I don't have. I mean, it, it's on both of them now are under a million dollars, but they're still like in the $850,000 to $900,000 range. So it's either way, it, it's an expensive bridge. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's going to be some good timber coming out of there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. So, um, all right, Joan. Thank you. Um, really, um, we come to the um, most exciting part of the meeting is setting the municipal tax rate for next year, um, which we've got. 
um, presented here to me at 0 0.5669, and that's just the municipal, not the school tax rate. Um, so there you have it. Um, I don't think there's much more tweaking that we can do on this one. Um, I'd move to, to set the preliminary tax rate at 0 0.5669 for fiscal year 2021. I can second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. And um, even though we delayed the uh, tax payments by a month and knocked it into thirds, that's, uh, it'll come up before you know it. And it's, um, it's all the same in the end, right? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, uh, just something that uh, we were talking about the cemetery there for a minute ago. And I, w I was up there the other day and I happened to be, that brook is dry right now. Oh yeah. It's, uh, it's got water up by the cemetery bridge there, but that one going into town, that there isn't much of a uh, gap underneath that from the gravel and the bridge itself. And I don't know whether we should uh, talk to the state maybe and see if they want to clean that out while there's no water in there. Cause it's pretty, it's only a couple of feet of, yeah you know, that dirt is underneath there of course it's always going to do that because you can't once you dig a hole in there it's just going to fill up but yeah i'm afraid if we do get some bad you know logs coming down there they're never going to fit go go under that bridge the way it's set up now and we do have some trees there along that cemetery brook that are certainly going to come over at some point yeah um so did, i don't know did some work on that last um last fall it seems and they did some work under the the bridge on um by robinson avenue but and then it just turned and filled right up again right yeah and i think they did the same thing here i i don't know if we should alert them or I, it, it doesn't hurt to do that i think that that we should um, um i i just noticed it the other day and yeah bring it up do you want me to take care of that yeah do you mind talking to them i think they're tired of hearing me ask them about it might as well get another voice well I'll, I'll give them a shout yeah i don't mind doing that then you're right now there's no um water in there it might make it a little easier yeah it might might be easier to get in there and dig it out yeah i think the thought is everything was so stirred up above that that it's just going to continue for a while to keep flushing and gravel down right. into that this is the same issue that uh with dean and his um, project which is slowly moving forward um, up, um, you know, across um, from his house or below his house in that bridge. Right. Yeah. But, and um, Joan, thank you for your work on on, on securing and finding partial funding for that. That was um, sounds like that might actually happen. Yeah, it just might. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Boy, I um, did we cover it? I just threw the basement on there. I'd kind of like to. I went down there the other day just to yeah. look it over. I I'd, I'd kind of like to get something going and try to clean that place out. Um, I don't know exactly what the plan is yet, but I'd like to go down and at least start organizing it if that's okay with you guys. Um, and then I would probably request some volunteer help and maybe we could get some stuff moved get some uh, stuff in the dumpster yeah, yeah. So, something Did like that um schnabel get some things somewhat organized down there well it's sort of organized but i'd like to start making it more permanent and start cleaning the stuff out of there i'd like to see uh all those desks out of there get rid of all that stuff so it's because it's just a mess down there yeah and uh, so, I don't, when you get back in Vermont, Nancy, maybe you could go down with me sometime and just show me where your historical stuff is and to make sure, because I'm going to, when I do that, I'm going to kind of organize it so we can get through and, and toss that stuff out. I, I'm going to talk to the people down at the, the uh, recycle place to see if there's some other place we should take all that electronic stuff and there's a pile of it in there yeah um rather than just down there i know they have a small section there that they 
allowed to dump that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't know if they'd want that much. There's going to be quite a lot. If you get the TVs and all that other stuff. And I think the town's probably got a couple pieces they need to get rid of anyway. So there's some things out in back of the garage too that need to be looked at. Yep. And removed. No, I, I have looked at that, Nancy. It's just mainly there's a lot of wood and there is some steel out there too. Right. And I, I would talk to them about metal because there's a lot of lockers down there. I don't see any use for them. I would uh, talk to mention it to Cooter and Terry maybe about anything they might want. I noticed there's some cones in there, some shovels. Uh, there's a battery charger. I think the fire department might be wanting that. Is the but refrigerator like still there? What's that? Is the refrigerator still there? The refrigerator still there. That would have to go. And in the furnace room, there's um, stove. Uh, a stove and a dishwasher, I think. Yeah, it could be. It could be I'd, I'd, also, I'd also like to look at taking the water and stuff out of there. I'm not sure we really need it in there. And there's, and I noticed that it looks like we're heating that back garage still. I would expect so. You know, that because there's just that hot air vent that just goes out there. I don't even think it's closed off. It didn't look it to me. And so we might be able to save a little bit. Yeah, just, just close it's, that off. Yeah. yeah, if we stuff that thing with insulation and yeah, once you know, we get but, some of the crap out of there, it's easier to see what's going on. Yeah, so if we, you guys, if you guys we, don't mind, I, I might be want, willing to put some time into that. If that's right, okay. we need, we, we'll need to keep an eye on things that are actually listed as town inventory and um go through the proper channels um, to make sure we're disposing of every of the town property um, properly. The constable yep. property. It's there, the, the constable's property, which is disbanded as far as I know, right? I know. So how do we deal with that? Listed. Things. How listed. do we deal with that though? It came through the governor's safety council, a lot of things. I think most of the stuff that they really care about, like they took the radar trailer back and we, you know, signed papers to give that to another, another, um, another county. And um, I guess as Pat mentioned, we'll just look at what is, was inventoried as a lot of stuff was on the inventory that did not really have value and like old defunct VCRs and stuff. So we're just can, I guess what you're getting at Pat is we need to make sure to update that inventory appropriately as we, get rid of stuff so there's no question. And most of those things like that were picked up by Tom from whomever wanted to get rid of them. Right. Right. And then they ended up on inventory. Yeah. But I guess we just need to mention it at a town at a at a select board meeting that you know we are considering disposing of certain town property and, and just make it official. Yeah. Well, let's put it in a minute. <laughs> we'll make right it. now. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess as we clean that out, we we'll just attend to what keep a, a running tally of, of, of items that have been listed as as an inventory town property. And then so we can address them as they come up and do them properly. Yeah. But, OK. All right. Cool. Um, I see um, Susie Smolin, you just joined us. Um, we're just pretty much at the end of our agenda. I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to, to um, ask about or if you were just here to see what's going on tonight. Yep. No, oh, wait, she's connecting. She's just almost connected. I don't know if she just heard what I said. Got a slow connection. It does not look like Susie is connecting very successfully yet. Um, 
she called she called me to get the login information. Um, yep. hmm. Maybe we could ask her to attend the next meeting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure what she wanted to talk about. Oh, there we go. Hey, Susie. Hey, thank hey. you. Hi. Yeah. My turn? Yes, it's your okay, turn. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, two things. First, um, um, I, I spoke briefly with you and with Julie about my wanting to put up a fence around my backyard. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I've had uh, Julie has made a valiant effort to see if there are any um, uh, past surveys on record there. And the one she came up with is a 1954 survey of my lot. Um, the town clerk um, does not believe they have a survey done. Norm Smith thought he did one, but he corrected himself. He actually did one for the firehouse to delineate the parking lot. Marvin Harvey um, had Norm do one, but um, um, they, they're not able to locate it. So what I would like to do at this point is, is um, I have a pretty good idea. There's the existing fence between me and the town clerk. Marvin's sure that the maple tree is right on the line, and then there's the, the town clerk. I'd like to just pound some, some posts in and um, have Marvin, the town clerk, and somebody from the town just take a look at it, and if everybody feels fine about it, I'll go ahead and put a fence in. Does that work for you all? Yeah, I think that's a good start. Yeah. Like you said, there are is isn't, isn't the fence still in the zoning? <laughs> And that's all think, through them? I think so. Um, no, I spoke with Dan McKinley. Um, he's under the impression um, that because um, the fence does not abut a, an actual road, um, that um, uh, as Dune advised me, the fence can go right on, the, on my property line. And I'm just assuming that the property line is where the fence is um, since there's been no issues with it. I would, I would think that's a fairly safe assumption. Now you said you did find a survey of your property from the fifties. Um, Julie did. Um, yeah. but it, it's you know it's it's written in surveys. Um, there's no, you know, there's north, south, east, west. Um, but there's no um footage. Um, um, it's there's nothing there that I can understand. Um, if anybody, if any of you could understand it, I can share it with you. So it sounds like the, there's the an existing fence that you're going to replace with a more substantial fence on bordering the town clerk's parking lot, correct? Correct. And then the 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 real question then is on the back side of your property, um, where that separates from the parking lot behind the credit union, and and that's what um. That's what the question is, where that line is? Well, yeah, that, that, yeah, actually, yes. Um, so I, I have spoken with Wanda. She made a thorough search uh, through her records, attic, basement. And um, what I'd like to do is just approach her with this idea of, of, of somebody, um, the board, or, you know, I don't know who they'd have come and look at what I want to do. There, when we bought the house, there was an – the, the, the fence does – turn the corner um, and and there's a, there was also a perennial flower bed already established and my plan would be to 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 just continue that fence line or maybe because there's a tree there um, and if they if they're fine with that then I can go ahead and um, yeah just get a little bit of privacy here yeah it, it since that fence does turn the corner and head towards route 100 that does makes sense to me at least to continue that. I guess you're putting some stakes in way where so we can see what you're talking about makes some sense. Yeah, that's my plan. Yeah. And See, then, I mean, wasn't, I there, con wasn't there even a yeah. kind of a light gauge wire fence along that line already or am I mistaken? Well, there was, there was a, a wire fence um, between the town clerk and um, you know the uh, it, that that could, that came closer to my house, but that was taken down because I think it was a plowing issue that it was there or something, mm. or I think it it came down one winter when the snow was just really high. Yeah. 
Right. So does that sound good to everybody? It does. To okay. me, sound good to you guys? Fine to me. If yep. I, I, I always thought that we had a fence ordinance in the in zoning, but I don't know if we do or not anymore. So I I kind of thought uh, well, that well. Green Mountain Bike Ken. Oh. Uh, what Dan told me is that um, that only applies if you're next to a um, an actual road, but because it's just parking lots next to me, it, it's not applicable. Uh, but if you if you want to check in with somebody from planning and zoning, um, you know, and let me know if there is more of an issue, then I'll let you know. That's that we need to lock yeah, the door. Um, that's the I don't have any issue with it really. I just want to make sure that there isn't any zoning issue with it. That's all. I don't. I don't think that yeah. I don't have any problem with it. But. Okay. Yeah, he said something about if it was an actual road, he thought it was like a thirty-foot setback or something. <laughs> um, but uh, again, since it's just a parking lot, that that wouldn't apply. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. Yeah. No. Yeah, either. and and I, I I explained to him what I was going to propose to you, and he thought that that was a perfect idea. Yeah. You know, just get get all the neighbors on the same page and move ahead. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was you said you had two things you wanted to talk about. Is there a second one? Yes, the second one is is um, I would like to have the ability to park two cars on the southeast corner um, of my lot. Um, uh, did, if the utility pole and the sign weren't there, I could actually access that spot from the road. But because of the existence of those two things, the only way I can access it is, is from the town clerk parking lot. Um, and um, it would seem like the simplest way to, to, to prevent people from parking there and blocking me in would be to, to uh, either I could do it or, or the town, I'd be happy to pay for it, would be just to paint some, you know, some of those diagonal lines that indicate no parking. Um, there, there's, there's four vehicles now connected with the apartment. Um, and for a number of years, um, um, when, before Russell had to go into the nursing home and stop driving, um, we were parking a vehicle there and he spoke with the plowing guys about it and nobody had an issue um, because they, instead of plowing, it became an issue plowing snow towards my property because it was knocking the fence over and they were running out of room. So now when they plow, they just come in from the road, from the road and they plow uh, south to north and then they push it all towards the river. Um, but the, the, uh, issue is is if i park there up on my lawn well you know a few feet of it it's, it's probably town property for one thing and um there are times where people will park and i can't get out and then i have to find the driver of the other vehicle to let me get out so i'm asking for um the ability to do that do you really get parked in that often Yes. I mean, not now during COVID, but in, in the past. I mean, you know, there, there are even times when um, ITI people will park there if, if, there, if that other two, two lanes of parking get full up. Um, and, uh, um, you know, people visiting Mary Beth or others, you know, or going to Rhoda's will park there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when there was bone builders, there were sometimes, you know, people park there. Um, so. Hmm. Well, I guess we'd have to, um, have to give some thought to that, to, you know, to what extent we, um, um, we're basically asking to turn the town parking lot into a driveway for your access. I'm asking for a right of way to get onto my property. Yeah. 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 Because, it, you know, the, 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 the bottom line is, is we're talking two parking places and it would seem to me that it might be uh, fairer, you know, ITI is using a great deal of parking, maybe the, you know, the two two slots next to the town clerk, ter, bleh, town clerk could be designated as, as 
two spots for the town clerk. Um, and that would make up the difference, you know. And as I said, if it weren't for the utility pole and the and the no parking on the road sign, I could access it from School Street. Right, right. You know, so yeah, I, I really would appreciate you taking that under consideration. All right, I'm not sure if we can make a decision on that tonight, but we'll um, we'll um, let's um, I'd like to um, confer with um, a couple of folks on it and, and um, get back to you on it. Okay, that that sounds great. All right, well, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Yep. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything they want to speak about tonight? Good, because I'm hungry. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> thank you all for coming out or or hooking up, not coming out. Um, <laughs> I didn't go very far. <laughs> reading in the in the news how Zoom had major major outages earlier this morning across the East Coast and some places in Europe. So I was curious to see if this is going to work, but it did. So we're great. We're great. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Night okay. all. Yeah, good, good night. night.